The story of humanity is, fundamentally, a story of movement. Those words from Lee Berger, renowned paleoanthropologist who revolutionized our understanding of human origins, capture the essence of our species' history. From our African beginnings roughly 300,000 years ago, Homo sapiens has been defined by our relentless push into new territories, like ancient explorers charting unknown seas. The fossil record reveals multiple migrations out of Africa. Many failed before the successful exodus around 70,000 years ago that led to global human presence. What made this particular migration succeed when others faltered? The answer lies in our remarkable capacity for cumulative culture, allowing innovations to spread across generations. What if everything we thought we knew about human origins was wrong? For decades, scientists believed modern humans emerged in East Africa roughly 200,000 years ago. This timeline was considered established fact, appearing in textbooks and museum exhibits worldwide. Yet a site in North Africa would eventually overturn this consensus, rewriting the opening chapter of our species' story. Jabel Irhud appears unremarkable at first glance, a limestone quarry nestled in the arid landscape of Morocco, about 62 miles west of Marrakesh. Like a dusty, forgotten book hiding profound wisdom between its covers, this ordinary quarry concealed extraordinary secrets beneath its surface. Workers initially discovered fossil remains there in 1961 while mining for Barit, but the site's true significance remained hidden for decades. When the first skull was found, researchers misclassified it as Neanderthal, assuming it came from a population that had migrated south from Europe. They estimated the fossils to be approximately 40,000 years old, relatively recent in evolutionary terms. Only through decades of meticulous work did the true story begin to emerge. Systematic excavations beginning in the 2000s revealed a wealth of new specimens. Archaeologists unearthed multiple fossil remains, including a remarkably complete cranium, J.I. 1, a partial skull cap known as a calvaria, J.I. 2, and the mandible of a child, J.I. 3. The site also yielded thousands of stone tools and animal bones bearing cut marks from butchery. The breakthrough came in 2017 through thermoluminescence dating of heated flint tools found alongside the fossils. This technique measures radiation accumulated in materials since they were last heated, providing precise age estimates. The results stunned the scientific community. These remains were approximately 300,000 years old, pushing back the origin of Homo sapiens by over 100,000 years and relocating our birthplace from east to North Africa. The Jebel Irhud fossils display distinctly Homo sapiens facial characteristics, combined with a more elongated, archaic brain case. This mosaic of traits suggests human evolution proceeded in stages rather than all at once. The discovery fundamentally alters our understanding of human origins, suggesting our species evolved across the entire African continent rather than in a single East African Garden of Eden. When you look at a skull from Jebel Irhud, something immediately stands out. While the face appears remarkably modern, the elongated brain case tells a different story. This mosaic of features presents a curious evolutionary puzzle, like ancient puzzle pieces slowly revealing the portrait of humanity. These individuals possessed faces nearly indistinguishable from yours and mine, yet their brain cases remained elongated and archaic, lacking the distinctive globular shape that characterizes modern human skulls. This combination suggests that human evolution proceeded in a piecemeal fashion, with different anatomical regions evolving at different rates. The anatomical differences between these early humans and their contemporaries reveal meaningful distinctions. Neanderthals possessed a protruding mid-face, robust brow ridges, 
and a low, elongated cranium with a characteristic bun at the back. Denisovans, known primarily from DNA and fragmentary fossils, had large teeth and robust jaws. The Jebel Irhud humans showed relatively flat faces with smaller brow ridges than Neanderthals, while their brain cases retained an archaic form. This evidence raises a fundamental question. What truly defines our species? Does Homo sapiens status rely on anatomical configuration, genetic markers, behavioral capacities, or some combination? The traditional view emphasized anatomy, but recent research has complicated this picture. Advanced analysis techniques have provided remarkable insights into development patterns. Synchrotron analysis of the Irhode, three immature mandible, revealed a growth pattern matching modern children rather than Neanderthals, suggesting developmental processes had evolved modern characteristics before skull shape reached its current form. The stone tools recovered alongside the fossils tell an equally significant story about cognitive capabilities. These sophisticated artifacts, created using the Levallois technique, required considerable forethought and planning. To create such tools, craftspeople shaped cores with specific striking platforms, then removed predetermined flakes with precise blows, similar to how a sculptor must visualize the finished statue within a block of marble before beginning to chisel. The unique combination of features in early Homo sapiens, their facial morphology, developmental patterns, and capacity for advanced tool creation, suggests cognitive abilities that would eventually lead to language and symbolic thought. These early humans possessed mental capacities that would ultimately define our species, carrying the seeds of complex social behaviors that allowed their descendants to spread beyond Africa and colonize every habitable corner of the planet. Imagine standing at the narrow strait of Bab el Mandeb 70,000 years ago, where the distance between Africa and Arabia narrows to just 12.5 miles. The water stretches before you, glittering under the ancient sun, a barrier and gateway simultaneously. This natural corridor became the primary route for humanity's greatest journey, the migration that would ultimately populate the entire planet. What drove these small bands of humans, perhaps no more than a few hundred individuals, to venture across this strait? During periods when sea levels dropped, this water crossing transformed into a navigable passage, opening the door to a new world. Archaeological evidence at sites like Skul and Kafza in present-day Israel reveals human remains dating to approximately 90,000 to 120,000 years ago, demonstrating that earlier groups had ventured beyond Africa. However, these populations apparently failed to establish permanent footholds, disappearing from the fossil record without contributing significantly to the genetic makeup of later human populations outside Africa. Their exit represents an evolutionary dead end, a poignant reminder that not all migrations succeeded. Picture a small group huddled together at dusk, crafting tools from stone as they prepared for the journey ahead. The technological toolkit carried by humans who successfully left Africa included finely crafted projectile points, scrapers for processing hides, and blades adapted for specific tasks. Bone implements like needles allowed for tailored clothing, crucial for populations moving into colder climates. The emergence of symbolic objects like beads and pendants hinted at complex social structures that provided competitive advantages. The Sahara Desert periodically transformed throughout our evolutionary history. During intervals of increased rainfall approximately every 12,400 miles, the barren landscape bloomed into savanna ecosystems with rivers and lakes. A family might have followed these waterways northward, gathering food from lush vegetation that would later vanish beneath the sand. These green Sahara periods created temporary highways 
through what is now one of Earth's most inhospitable environments. Early migrants followed coastlines rather than venturing directly into continental interiors. Shoreline environments offered predictable resources, shellfish, fish, and marine mammals, allowing human groups to move rapidly across southern Asia and eventually reach Australia. Within approximately 12,400 miles, humans had traveled from East Africa to Australia, a journey spanning thousands of miles. Genetic evidence confirms that all non-African populations worldwide carry genetic markers originating from a small founding population from East Africa. The limited genetic diversity outside Africa compared to the greater diversity within the continent confirms that a relatively small group successfully left Africa to populate the rest of the world. This genetic bottleneck represents one of the most profound events in human evolutionary history. Recent discoveries, including a human finger bone at Al Wusta in Saudi Arabia, dated to 85,000 years ago, continue to illuminate our ancestors' remarkable journey. The DNA in your cells holds a remarkable secret. Roughly 2% of the genetic material in most people outside Africa comes from Neanderthals, while some Asian populations carry up to 6% Denisovan DNA. This genetic signature represents a tangible connection to our evolutionary cousins, evidence that when early Homo sapiens ventured beyond Africa, they weren't entering empty territories, but landscapes already inhabited by other human species, with whom they apparently did more than just compete. As our ancestors spread across Eurasia between 70,000 and 40,000 years ago, they encountered populations that had evolved separately for hundreds of thousands of years. Neanderthals had adapted to the colder climates of Europe and Western Asia, developing robust bodies with shorter limbs that conserved heat more efficiently. The mysterious Denisovans occupied parts of Asia, leaving behind a genetic legacy woven into the fabric of modern human DNA, like threads in an ancient tapestry. The story becomes more complex with discoveries like those from Apodyma Cave in Greece. Human remains dated to approximately 210,000 years ago were found alongside later Neanderthal fossils, suggesting a pattern where territories changed hands multiple times over tens of thousands of years. Early humans temporarily occupying parts of Europe before Neanderthals reclaimed these regions, who were later replaced by modern humans. These encounters left lasting genetic contributions. Specific Neanderthal genes provided advantages to humans in new environments, strengthening immune responses against unfamiliar pathogens and facilitating adaptation to colder climates. The Denisovan genetic contribution includes a gene variant helping modern Tibetans survive at high altitudes by regulating hemoglobin production. These beneficial genes spread precisely because they improved survival chances. Archaeological evidence reveals cultural transmission accompanied genetic exchange. Neanderthal sites from around 40,000 years ago show symbolic behaviors similar to Homo sapiens, including body ornamentation, suggesting they adopted these practices through contact with our species. Despite these interactions, Neanderthals disappeared around 40,000 years ago, with Denisovans vanishing shortly thereafter. Their extinction coincided with Homo sapiens' expansion throughout their territories. What allowed our species to survive while our evolutionary cousins perished appears to be a combination of factors. Extensive social networks, technological innovations enabling adaptation to diverse environments, and demographic resilience to environmental changes. The legacy of these ancient encounters endures in our genes. We are living archives of a complex evolutionary history where multiple human species once shared the planet before our ancestors emerged as the last humans standing. In the cold caves of France and Spain, something unprecedented occurred roughly 40,000 years ago. 
humans began creating elaborate paintings of animals, handprints, and abstract symbols that reveal a cognitive revolution had taken place. These ancient galleries, hidden in darkness for millennia, speak to us across time. Messages from ancestors who shared our minds but lived in a profoundly different world. The images at sites like Chauvet and Lascaux demonstrate a capacity for symbolic representation that archaeologists consider a defining characteristic of modern human cognition. Created in deep, difficult-to-access chambers, they required planning, artificial lighting, and sophisticated pigment preparation. All evidence of minds capable of complex, multi-step processes. This symbolic capacity emerged alongside other cognitive and social adaptations that allowed Homo sapiens to outcompete other human species. Between 70,000 and 30,000 years ago, dramatic climate fluctuations forced rapid adaptation, with temperatures sometimes changing by several degrees Fahrenheit within a single human lifetime. While Neanderthals had specialized in cold conditions, they lacked the behavioral flexibility to adjust to these swift environmental shifts, like a species that had mastered a single game only to find the rules suddenly changed. The human toolkit diversified dramatically after 50,000 years ago. Specialized implements appeared for specific survival challenges, fishing hooks to access new food sources, sewing needles to create fitted clothing for harsh winters, and eventually bow and arrow technology that transformed hunting practices. These innovations spread rapidly across vast distances as social networks facilitated knowledge sharing. Stone tools found hundreds of miles from their material sources reveal extensive trade networks spanning multiple human groups. Earlier evidence of symbolic thinking appears in 70,000-year-old ochre engravings from Blombos Cave in South Africa, and similarly dated shell beads across Africa and the Middle East. These first sparks of abstract thought and social signaling eventually ignited the flame of cumulative culture. Our ability to share, preserve, and build upon innovations across generations. Language capabilities, while leaving no direct archaeological trace, enabled this cultural transmission. This foundation of shared knowledge allowed rapid adaptation through cultural rather than biological means, becoming humanity's most significant advantage. The story that began in a Moroccan cave 300,000 years ago continues in each of us. Every human alive today carries the genetic legacy of those first Homo sapiens and their remarkable journey across the planet. Our DNA contains this ancient record, a molecular autobiography linking us directly to those early populations who ventured beyond Africa to populate the world. This scientific detective story reveals human history as a complex tapestry spanning hundreds of thousands of years. The profound lesson from our origins is that all humans share a recent common ancestry. We are one species, woven together by threads of ancient light, united by our African origins and our unique capacity for creating and sharing culture.